Now for the past couple of weeks, I've been using this uh, as my daily driver to really put it through its paces. This is the Asus ZenBook 14 that's running the AMD Ryzen 5. Pair that with an MX350 GPU and on paper, it sounds like a great combination. You right, might think, well, nice to have a dedicated GPU. Well, it sounds good on paper, but in reality, it's a different story. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the Asus ZenBook 14, running the AMD Ryzen 5 with an MX350 GPU. All new for 2020, coming up. Want to see more videos like this? Why not hit that subscribe button? Make sure you hit that notification bell. This way you'll be alerted every time I upload a new video. Make sure you follow me on social media, especially Twitter and Instagram. I'll post a lot of updates on those platforms. And today's video is brought to you by all the members who have contributed this month to the channel. Why not hit that join button below? And in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Asus. I'm not being sponsored by Asus. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own and no one is seeing this video before its release. This unit was purchased with my own money. I did not receive a review unit from Asus. Now, when I purchased this about three weeks ago, it was on sale for a great price at $549.99 over at Best Buy here in the US, but it's since gone back up to its normal price of $699.99. A little bit of a harder price to swallow at that price point. Of course, I'll put the latest pricing in the link below. It might go back on sale, so be vigilant. Now, build quality is actually really good. It survived a lot of the test under its mill standard A10G rating. That means this can take a licking and keep on ticking. It's also pretty light at 2.54 pounds or 1.15 kilograms, easy to carry around with you when you're on the go. Now, as far as the ports are concerned, I covered them in the unboxing video, but for those that didn't see it, on the left side is your power port, a USB-A port, an HDMI port to connect to a monitor, and a USB-C port. Now, unfortunately, that USB-C port doesn't support charging, so you cannot charge this device with the USB-C charger, which is, of course, a negative in my book. Now, moving over to the right side, you get a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, another USB-A port, and a micro SD card slot for storage expansion. Of note, there's no Thunderbolt 3 port here. And as I mentioned in my unboxing video, Asus makes it pretty easy to get inside this laptop. Remove the T5 Torx screws, remove the two feet on the bottom. There are two screws beneath that. Once you do that, you can pop off the bottom plate. Those two feet have an adhesive that can be reused, so you can put them back on when you're done. Now, once inside, you'll notice that it does have a single fan. It does have a replaceable SSD, so you can upgrade the SSD yourself. Unfortunately, the RAM is soldered into the motherboard. You won't be able to upgrade that. And as I mentioned, my unit has eight gigabytes of LP DDR4X RAM. That's a little bit slower than, of course, DDR4 RAM, and that will affect the performance. We'll get into that in just a little bit. This also has dual band Wi-Fi. It's Wi-Fi 6 with a Bluetooth 5 combo, and it's all working well. No complaints on that front. Okay, let's talk about that display. What we're looking at here is a 14 inch full HD display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. That of course translates into a 16 to nine aspect ratio. Now I did notice a little bit of screen bleed, nothing too terrible, nothing too out of the ordinary, but something to keep in mind. Now it does have some really deep blacks, good white points, decent contrast, really good Delta E score. So it's good for color accuracy and it does cover the color gamut pretty well at 92% sRGB, 71% Adobe, RGB, 74% of the P3 wide color gamut, and 68% NTSC, making this a decent choice for those creators that like to do Lightroom, Photoshop, and of course, video editing. And with its 92% screen to body ratio, you're looking at some really slim bezels that give off a nice sleek and modern look. And at 300 nits, this is a good choice for both indoor and outdoor use because it does have a matte display. There's no unnecessary reflections or glare that you would normally get with a glossy display. So I like the choice that they went with. That matte display really works well. Now it does have some screen bleed as I did mention, so that is something to keep in mind. But nothing too terrible, nothing in terms of a deal breaker. So this is the front facing camera on the Asus ZenBook 14 with that Ryzen 5, with that 
MX350 GPU. Uh, this is actually uh, pretty good, I guess, for doing Skype, for doing Zoom calls during this pandemic. It's a 720p, 30 frames per second webcam. It's also an infrared webcam. That means you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello, and that's pretty good. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comments section below. And for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger. Now, as far as the keyboard is concerned, it's actually pretty comfortable to type on for extended periods of time. Decent key travel, decent tactile feedback, and it does have a multi-stage backlight allowing you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. And it's working really well in that regard. It also has a precision touchpad. It works well. Two finger scrolling is pretty smooth and all the Windows 10 gestures work as advertised. And when it comes to battery life, it has a 50 watt hour battery and it did seven hours and 45 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits, which I say is okay. Now, of course, you can do more battery saving techniques. Of course, you can disable the MX350. You probably can get a little bit more battery life out of it. But under normal use, everyday use, you're looking at anywhere from seven and a half to eight hours, of course, depending on what you're doing. But please remember, you cannot charge this laptop with a USB-C charger. You have to use a supply charger in the box. Now, when it comes to performance for everyday use, you'll be fine in terms of doing Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, consuming media, watching Netflix, YouTube, and the like. You'll be fine. It should perform pretty well. Now, when it comes to things that like video editing and more graphics intensive things, well, it gets pretty interesting. Now, the problem here is that it's running LP DDR4X RAM rather than the faster DDR4 RAM. And when you do things like gaming, it all plays a part in this. Now, I compared it with the Ryzen 5 paired with that MX. 350 versus the Ryzen 5 with its integrated graphics turning off that MX350 and as you can see from the results it's pretty interesting with the Ryzen 5 paired with that MX350 Bioshock Infinite on low settings got 87 frames per second Dota 2 with the DX11 on in the high settings you're looking at around 86 frames per second but if you look at the Ryzen 5 with its integrated graphics on its own it actually did pretty well in its own right but it's clear you definitely do get a little bit of a boost with that MX350. So that's been pretty good. Now this laptop runs pretty quiet, not a lot of fan noise, which is pretty good. But I did notice that it does get a bit warm or a bit hot by the exhaust fan, which is located by the display, which is not a good place, of course, for it to get hot. Now this laptop sports two downward facing speakers located towards the front of the laptop. And I gotta say, surprisingly good, rich sound with some decent volume, can fill up a medium sized room pretty nicely. They did a decent job with the sound. Okay, let's bring it all home. Can I recommend the Asus ZenBook 14 Q407 IQ? And the answer is it depends. If depends if you can get this at $550. At that price, I think it's a great deal because you're getting pretty good performance paired with that MX350 GPU. But at a full price at $699, it's harder for me to recommend due to its thermal limitations and due to the slower RAM that they're using. They're using the LP DDR4X RAM, not the faster DDR4 RAM, which we would have like to have seen. But with that being said, it is a good value at $550. You're getting a nice, bright, vibrant display, covers the color gamut really well, pretty good color accuracy, and it does have surprisingly good speakers, a nice keyboard and a nice touchpad, the Ergo Lift hinge, good for comfortable typing angle. There are some negatives that we need to point out that there's no USB-C charging, no Thunderbolt 3, and there's no 4K display option. Although the thermal constraints give me a little bit of a pause, but at $550, this is definitely a recommend. So what do you think about this bad boy, the Asus ZenBook 14 with that Ryzen 5? Now, when I bought this, it was $550. It went up to about $700 over at Best Buy. Again, keep checking the link below. I'll have the latest pricing where you can get the best deal on this. At $550, it's not a bad deal if you can live with some of the limitations that this brings. Of course, those thermal limitations are going to be at the forefront as far as the issues with this device. Now, as far as the Ryzen 5, we all know how it performs, the good thermals, the good performance we've seen in other devices. The problem here is the RAM used by Asus on this. They wanted to save some money and some power, so they went with the LP DDR4X, which is about 15% less in terms of power than you'd get with something like the DDR4 RAM we saw in some other variants. And 
you definitely see the difference in terms of the processing power. Now, the thermal constraints on this also play a role on what kind of performance you can get out of this. So for everyday tasks like Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, it all works fine. When you try to do gaming on this with this CPU combination, you're gonna have some issues with thermal throttling. You're gonna have issues with the thermal displacement on this. It gets rather hot. Not the best thermal solution employed here by Asus. Battery life is pretty good. Uh, of course, you can get pretty much most of the day with this under your normal use, so that's been pretty good. Build quality is great with that all metal design. It actually is really nice. And you can upgrade the SSD yourself, uh, as I demonstrated in this video. It's actually been pretty easy for you to access the inside. But at $550, and if that's the price you can get this at, I really think it's a nice choice for those that are on a budget, but want something a little bit better than a budget laptop. This can bring something a little bit more to the table, just not rising to the level of a more premium laptop. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya. Thank you.